Pinewood Studios, home of the gadget-laden Bond movie and concept cars. And boy, have I got a gadget for you, because Ford chose this as the location to launch their 24-7 concept to the British press. Now, as an avid viewer, you may recall that we first saw this concept at the Detroit Motor Show, when along with the rest of the world's motoring press, well, I think we may rather have missed the point. Whereas most concept cars are showcases for wild exterior shapes and attractive shells with well, rather disappointing cockpits, the 24-7 is all about the interior. What you see here could be called a box that contains a very real and very clever concept. And who better to explain just what it's all about than Lawrence van den Acker, the chief designer responsible for the project. What have you set out to do here, Lawrence? With this project, we really tried to merge communication and transportation. Uh, communication is changing our world uh, today. Uh, people want more and more information all the time. So with this project, we tried to merge the two and come up with a user-friendly and responsible way of, of interacting with our cars and offer all this information. So we know then that the interior of this is loaded with technology that you're going to talk us through. Uh, have you not bothered with the exterior? I mean, the shape of it, what, what's that mean to you? No, the exterior was very important because if we made such a, an innovative, radical interior, we couldn't shape it in a traditional automotive box. So therefore, with the exterior, we tried to stay away from traditional automotive shapes, as you can tell. Um, it's very sheer, very product-like, very architectural, and the exterior is more a canvas, and it's as different from c traditional cars as the iMac is from grey computer boxes. So we definitely want to make sure that the difference in sight was reflected aesthetically also in the exterior. And it's got no headlamps or tail lamps, I noticed. Well, they're there only when you need them. And that, in philosophy, is very close to the instrument panel that you're going to see. Right, well, enough talking about it. Let's have a look and see how it works, what it can actually do. System startup. When it starts up, it will show you four different users. It's a family of four. Mother Natalie, Father Steve, and two sons, a son and a daughter, Jack and Elizabeth. So suppose we choose Natalie. Select driver Natalie. Selecting. It shows that she selected herself. Close user profile. Gives her age away there as well. Closing. 42. Well, not everybody wants to know about that. <laughs> and this is Natalie's world. She's into gardening, so she has flowers in the background, which she can change next week to something so we can else. put whatever we want on the background of it. Yes, not unlike, again, not unlike your computer. You can custom design it to your personal taste. But if she's lost, for instance, or wants to find a friend in a new cafe, she can give a command and find Cafe Claude. Locating. Then it would start up the GPS system. It would locate a cafe and it would guide her to the cafe through traffic jams on one-way streets. Close GPS. Closing. Or if she wants to make a phone call, she would simply say, open cell. Opening. And then she could tell the system to dial mom, dial my son, dial dad at, at the office or anything. I notice what looks suspiciously like a camera up there on the rear view mirror. Yes, the camera here, we use it for several purposes. You can use it for video conferencing, so when you call each other, you can actually see each other. You can use it for aiming it at your baby in the back if you want to keep an eye on her or him. Or you can use it to take snapshots and email, you know, touristy pictures from your holidays to your parents at home. Close cell. So what's going to be the difference then if we decide to be Jack, say, instead of Natalie? What do we get? Well, let's have a look. Select driver Jack. Selecting. Now, Jack likes his female voice talking back to him. Obviously. Very nice female voice. Close user profile. Closing. Now, Jack's world is very different. He's much more into gothic and uh, dark music. And his music level is higher than his mother's. Um, the first thing he wants to do is play his CDs. So he says, play CD4. Play. And he wants to be able to adjust every single detail on a CD player. But if, for instance, he wants to go to a rave party and send, send a friend of, the, of his the map, he can basically access it. Find South Dog Warehouse, Locating. which is the place where the raid party takes place. It locates the place, it, saves, it shows a map, and he says, save map. Saving. And then he will send it to his friend's email address. Send map to joji at mindspring.net. Sending. 
It opens up this email and it accesses the internet and it sends the map. Obviously, all this will be voice controlled. And obviously, not everything you will do while driving. Uh, some of the things like the entertainment side of it, you would definitely do when you're standing still. We don't want to get you into a more dangerous situation than, than possible. System shutdown. And you shut it down just like you would your normal computer. And the whole thing goes to sleep, and there it is, once again, resting, looking well. Perhaps not like an entirely ordinary dashboard, but look, Lawrence, that's an incredible amount of technology. Right. More than I've got in my office, but you can take it with you on the move. How realistic is this? Is this just a wild concept? Will we see it? Can I buy one? The, um, it's not as wild as you think it is. A lot of this technology we, we literally took off the shelf. Uh, voice interaction is a, available on our Jaguar S-Class. Internet will be available in the next two to three years. Uh, rear projection information displays, uh, there's already existing prototypes uh, made by Visteon, our, one of our main suppliers. So the technology exists, it's just a matter of how we put it together in a pretty dramatic fashion. Now, there have been people who've turned around and said, what do you want all that in your car for? You want to get in your car to escape. It's, it's away from the office and email and the phone and the internet and video cameras. Right, and I can imagine that, but then just buy a Mustang other end of the scale completely. Yeah. One final question, the name, 24-7, what does that mean? Well, since you're connected all the time, it's, it just basically says you're connected 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can go on with your life, even while driving in your car. Now, we've been chatting to the guys developing this concept, and the more you think about it, the more possibilities you start to see. For instance, you pull up at the lights, and alongside pulls up a car with a young lady that you rather like the look of, well, you can set up a link and send a message across. It won't guarantee a positive response, obviously, but you can send a message. Or say your parents with children. Youngster wants to borrow the car for a night out. Well, you can check how fast it's been driven when it gets back. Or maybe even impose a speed limit on it in the first instance. Or what if you fancy a night out on the town? Well, you can set it up so that you can have access to reviews and times of plays. You can book ahead at a restaurant and it'll show you the way there. The more you think, the possibilities are endless. And as Lawrence says, don't dismiss this as just more dream concept car technology. It's not that far away. We could be doing this very soon.